Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disown. We all know that Intel's 12th gen CPUs are going to be a force to be reckoned with this year, offering up to 28% improvement at 1080p over their 11th gen. Now, WCC FTEC ran some benchmarks on the 12900HK and it was some 23% faster than the Ryzen 5900HX. But does this mean that it's all over for AMD till they launch Zen 4? I don't think so. Sure. NVIDIA is going to take the limelight with the 3070 Ti and the 3080 Ti. The former having the same number of cores as a desktop 3070, but with about 55 watts less power. Still, NVIDIA is saying it will be up to 70% faster than the 2070 Super at the same power. And the 3080 Ti about 40% faster than the 2080 Super also at the same power. Now, I had already tested the 2070 Super against the 3070, so in theory, the 3070 Ti should be up to about 50% faster than the 3070, and I put these frame rates in my shadow of the Tomb Raider graph. Now, a friend of mine has the RX 6800M in the uh, G15 Advantage, and once he swapped in faster RAM and bypassed the integrated uh, GPU by using an external monitor, he got 138 FPS in shadow of the Tomb Raider DX12, High settings, 1080p. Now AMD says that the new 6850M XT will be 7% faster, putting that at 148 FPS. Also, they claim that the 6650M or the 6650M XT will be 20% faster than the 6600M, which in itself got 107 FPS, so that gives it 128 FPS. So we added this data to the chart also. I think this is a decent showing, the 6850XT being on par with the 165W3080 and the 6650M being 10% faster than the 125W3070 or just behind the 2080 Super which is running at 150 watts. And you have to bear in mind that OEMs will likely position the all AMD systems cheaper than their Nvidia counterparts. But I think the biggest two things that AMD announced was Smart Shift Eco and Smart Access Graphics. Now, Smart Shift Eco disables a dedicated GPU while gaming on battery, allowing you to use the RDNA2 iGPU, which, which now has 12 compute cores versus 8 on the previous generation, providing up to two times the frame rates. But also now with Smart Shift Eco, allowing you to game longer on battery, up to twice as long. I think for a mobile device, this is excellent, and we may now be seeing two to three hours of gaming on battery, which makes it a viable proposition, and certainly one I will be testing. And as for AMD Smart Access Graphics, this is like NVIDIA's Advanced Optimus, which, let's face it, was rarely used and often didn't give us a good battery life as, as a hybrid mode and offered a lower frame rate than, say, dedicated GPU mode. This is an automatic MUX switch that allows a direct connection between the display and the dedicated GPU when you're gaming and with the iGPU when it's not. And there's no reboot required. And we all know that bypassing the iGPU I can give a nice frame rate boost. So, if AMD implements this right, this could be huge. I'm also excited to see the new Jared GPUs used in laptops that are under 20mm thick and under 4.5 pounds in weight. AMD notes these GPUs with an S at the end, so no doubt that means for slim. Now, these will run at uh, lower wattages than their M counterparts and will be competing against their uh, NVIDIA's Max-Q GPUs. So I think, for many people, something like the 2022 ASUS Zephyrus G14 looks like an exciting product. Good frame rates, even on battery, coupled with good enough CPU performance, and also long battery life. Now, if I could get a laptop like the MSI Delta with, say, a 6750M, which can be, say, 20% faster than an RTX 3070, say, for $1,500 with premium FreeSync, Smart Shift Eco, then sign me up, because you can guarantee that an equivalent NVIDIA model will be north of $2,000. Let me know in the comments what you think of AMD's gaming prospects this year. Thanks for watching. Bye now.